Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. I know it's been a while, but we're back. Today, we are going to be working on finishing the farming factory and also doing the logic for the factory and then testing it so that we can have a full dry run by either the end of this episode or the entire next episode. And we can see how all of this will work together as one piece. And then that'll be super exciting and we can close off this portion of the factory, or at least building it. We're gonna have to make it fleshed out a little bit and make it look good, but that's okay. Before I get into it, I wanna wish everybody a healthy and safe Christmas season, holiday season, whatever you wanna call it. And I think my goal for the end of this year, or at least by the end of this year into next year is to reach 10,000 subscribers. And from the looks of it, that's that's gonna be impossible, but it's okay, we can still try. So if you are a part of that, like some percentage that you'll see on the screen or whatever that isn't subscribed, please try and see if I can reach my goal, 10,000 by the end of December. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna happen, but hey, everyone counts. All right, at the end of last episode, we were going to add water and we finally did. I did it off camera. It's really simple. All you have to do is just put a bearing and, or a block and a bearing and then a water cannon on it and then rotate it by 45 degrees. It's really not that hard at this angle. It's It fits right on. And as you can see, we tested it out and all these plots are watered. We will do another test just to see if it works. I don't know if it's 100% consistent, but it's at least, you know, 50% consistent from what I've seen so far. So actually, we might as well just do a full dry run. Right now I have it set up so that the control panel kind of sees things, but this will actually relay the information over to that side. And the rest of the logic is actually done up here. And I will take you to the top and you can see the spaghetti of code that we have right up here, even though it's really not spaghetti or code at all. What we have here is separated functioning mechanics for the pistons and the movement for the planting. So this right here, you saw me build that last episode. It basically makes this piston move forward and left all the time. This one on this side is, is pretty much the same exact. Actually, it is the same exact thing, except it doesn't actually control the center piston. What will happen is a single unit will be ticked and that unit, once it gets like ticked off or once it gets shown that it needs to start farming, it'll that'll come from the control center. It'll send a message to both of these farming units telling them to start doing what they're doing. However, it will do a cross check of the what needs to be planted. So like, our, like we have here, we have these sensors depending on what's going on. It will tell you what needs to be planted based off of which one it needs to be planted. So if I, if I actually put something there, that will then turn off this block right here. As you can see, we only have this one on because that needs to be planted. And when you press this button, uh oh, there we go. <laughs> I didn't press it hard enough. So when you press this button, it only sends off this side. So you can see this lights up to show this side is planting only. This side is not going off. You can see there's no water coming out or anything. And you can see there is water and plants coming out on this side. Perfect. Hey, here comes the drone again. It just went all the way through and now it's coming back through and it should stop, get twisted up and around town and down again you go. A little bit of wheel spin still on the jacks and that could cause some problems, but this worked so far and I'm, I'm not gonna complain too much. I have yet to actually phase out these little twisty bits because <laughs> I've just been lazy. So I guess that's the way it is. But so far, everything works. Uh, let me put these away real quick. So those slide up again. Make sure the car can still drive through. It's, there's going to be a little bit tight around this water cannon, but I think as long as I don't make anything else stick out, it should be fine. Yeah. Oh man, it even jiggles them a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's not good. If it becomes too much of a problem, we can just move these to another section or probably like towards the middle right here, facing inwards so that it can probably shoot a little bit better, but for now, I think we're fine. Now that we pretty much have the prototype in a beta, beta, beta state, I guess you can call it. It doesn't work completely or hundred percent yet, but it works enough. What we're going to do here is actually just finish off this little cropping section and put it on the other side. Cause I completely forgot to do that <laughs> off camera. And so let me do that really quickly. Okay. I think I've done it. I'm not entirely sure if I have or not, but we can actually test it out right here. Okay, those things are built. Well, I think it is. I'm not really sure. It's been a while since I've actually tested this logic, so we're gonna just hope for the best. Let's put this timer at the right spot. 60 seconds is fine for both. 
and this should be fine within 12 this should be within 12. so let's actually test this out by planting some tomatoes shall we so let's put in about 10 tomatoes here all right and i think everything should be set up so it should be as simple as pretending that this harvester comes through it does its job it sucks up this one and it sucks up this one and now these come down as needed and this switch isn't necessary anymore and then the logic gate over there the control center which we will set up very soon was going to check where this drone is and maybe even stop the drone in its tracks if needed and once it is outside of this square area so that we don't have any interference it will then send a tick over to here and that tick will be represented as this button this button does that it doubles checks and makes sure to know what is needed and then it sends out the planters both planters are going since both lights are on gorgeous so far everything is staying and watering okay now will this last section get watered here okay okay and i ran out of <laughs> I ran out of seeds. It worked, kind of. I think it did work. I think there was a problem with my timing because of the way I have it set up. So we can check that out a little bit later, but for now, this side for sure worked. I just ran out of seeds on that other side. So I'm not gonna complain too much. Because it missed out on those last couple plants, it actually is going to think that it is uh, not completely done planting yet. So what could happen for a fail safe is that this could send out another signal to this. However, it'll waste like 10 to 12 spots. That's the only problem, but that's okay. I mean, I'll probably have lots of seeds around anyways, so I guess that's fine. But let's pretend that that happened to be done and is doing its thing. Let's just grab some fertilizer or something, or maybe just Instagrow it with our spud gun. Alrighty then. These are all now fully grown and our drone is happens to be back on track right here. You know, it, it got stopped somewhere along the way, but it's going to keep going forward now. This should recognize that it's there and... Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, so I was supposed to actually, you know, anyways, let's just pretend that didn't happen. I think I know why I want to switch to that rotational piston angle bearing system thing. And it's because there are some things that fail whenever I reload the game with these twisty bits. So sometimes if it's supposed to be on and it's off, when I reload the game, it'll be all off. So I'll either need to make sure that the car goes out of reset position right here at some point, or just make everything work without it. I don't know. Anyways, so everything is full. The car is coming around. The factory's planters have put itself away or put themselves away. And this car should drive by, give them a little bit of a nudge at the top, but that's okay. And now we have a problem. Okay. So the problem is that um, tomatoes are actually <laughs> shorter than uh, potatoes. I mean, I should have recognized that. I really should have recognized that. But, you know, no one told me and I was being stupid and I'm being dumb. So we're going to have to move this in a different location. So let's actually just... I want to say it's safe to say that this is now correct. If I'm wrong, I'm just wrong. I don't I don't know what to do about it. But I think this is okay. Right now we have this timer being filled up. It's almost at the full 60 seconds. It should reach there by the time that this drone gets there. So we should be fine. So let's pretend that this all worked. We're going to move this while we wait for the drone. Here comes the drone. It should recognize that it needs to stop right here. All right, it goes and it's stuck on the thing. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to move the water pumps. That's that's very unfortunate, actually. You really hate to see that. <laughs> oh my goodness. This was a catastrophic failure. Oh my gosh, I'm face palming right now. On the bright side, at least the drone did harvest all the plants. I'm not going to like, you know, say it was a complete failure, but it was still a pretty extravagant failure in general. <laughs> Now, the reason why I have these opposite of each other, first of all, because it looks cool. And second of all, it also balanced the weight on the two. So 
but I'm going to have to really just move this one up top and this other one up top and it'll be uneven weighted so hopefully it won't mess too much with everything but it should just work though. Okay, there we go. I have moved them to the top and reconnected them to the water pump over there. I'll show you guys what that looks like pretty soon. It's just, you know, a water pump. So, you know, it's not really too much, but we got this working or I think it works. I haven't tested it out yet and I'm not going to. I'm actually gonna go straight to the control center to finish the logic of the factory portion. First, actually, before I go all the way over there, I want to do the, I guess, the stopper. I remember me mentioning that I can't really have this be doing any work while the drone is doing around in its loop. So let's actually set up the mechanisms to make sure and ensure that this drone is in the proper location when it needs to be. What I'm going to do, what I have decided I'm going to do is put a little bit of a piston, a little bit of a piston. I mean, not a complete piston as possible as that is in scrap mechanic. I'm kidding. We're just going to put a piston down on the floor, essentially right here. And that is going to contain a red block. Let's put it one back. And this red block will be attached to this piston or a little bit of piston that I've mentioned. And let's actually paint it the right red. I think it's this color, not entirely sure. And put it as a range of one speed, a little bit faster, and we should be good to go. Let's pop a logic gate down right here, just so we can have it there. Let's connect it up to this piston right here, just in case. And I think I'll make it an ore. I'm not entirely sure yet. But essentially what we want to do is make sure that whenever this is like not on that the car is stopped at least is going to be absolutely stopped right here because this is what triggers that part and we can actually keep the sensor right there. It'll be, it's just reasoning. There's reasonings. So basically it's actually going to be a shortcut. What I'm going to do here, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it will get the job done. What we have to do now is just do a NAND, right? So if we get the inverse of this yellow logic gate and then also combine it with the inverse of this yellow, this basically when I duplicate this somehow, this is gonna take a while. I will have to do this off camera, but from both of those logic gates, all we have to do is NAND it and then put that attached to this OR right here, or maybe just, we'll just put two gates because I wanna make things simple, even though I know it adds a little bit of complexity, but it makes things a little bit easier to at least understand. It's kind of like writing clean code. Even though you have a bunch more lines than you normally would, or yeah, even though you have more lines than you normally would, if you can understand it, that's the more important part than how many lines of code you've written and whatnot. So let's just have two NANDs, right? And connect them both to this OR. I think there's an easier way to do that, but it, it kind of works. We can also connect this up and this NAND and all that stuff to the control center, which we are going to do. So now if we put the drone, reset it back here, we turn it on, it should cross over. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Do we have a, yeah, we can just do this. I know it's kind of cheap and kind of dumb and making it look a little bit weird, but just so we don't have any catching, we'll just put a ramp right there. So now if the car is actually stopped right on the, right on the thing, that's pretty good. I might move the piston a little bit so that they can actually stop on the sensor, but uh, it's fine. We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fine, so let's pretend this is going, blah, yada, yada, yada. It finally gets over here. Okay, car is released. This thing is going back and we're good to go. Perfect. Now what we need to do is make sure we know where the car is at all times. And I actually forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to do that. I'll just erase that real quick. There we go. And because the car still thinks that there are tomatoes to be dropped off, actually, I think it has tomatoes in it. Yeah, it has tomatoes to drop off. Let's see if it actually gets over here and does its job properly. I'm not entirely sure if it will. I kind of got distracted there. I know I was talking about how I need to know where the car is, but this is kind of more interesting to me <laughs> so far. But basically it's just going to be a switch and whenever the car turns or goes onto the loop, it turns on a switch. And whenever it goes off the loop, it turns off the switch. That's all it's gonna be. And that's how we'll have it. Well, it kind of worked, but it actually didn't stop on this because I don't think I have the logic set up completely. Real quickly, we will have the, I guess track logic will be in the center right here. So we will have the bit of whether it's on the track or off the track. Let's actually put that across the wall. I don't know, something that's like not normal, something that I haven't used really yet. I haven't used brown. Yeah, so let's just use brown. So brown is gonna be a bit for on track or off track. 
and that will be triggered by sensors and the sensors will basically trigger this thing on or off and that's you know it's pretty straightforward let me just put the bit part down and so like i said before the track will be switched to the on position or at least it will recognize that it is on track once the car crosses over let's say this sensor right here and now let's say that the car will be going off track once it crosses over this sensor right here and also the other sensor on the other side as well okay now in a very crude way the car or this control center knows when the car is on the loop or off the loop next what we want to do actually is make sure that these don't come down until the car is off the loop or some sort of, you know, in some way that's out of the way of these. Because remember how we stopped the drone from going whenever these go down? What if the drone is already on the loop and these want to go down? Like say it just harvested and now this recognized it needs to plant and starts going down to plant and gets in the way, that could be a problem. The solution to this is going to be pretty simple, I think. I'm not really sure. I think it's going to be to attach an OR gate. We're going to paint it brown. And essentially all we're going to have to do is just attach the output of that switch all the way over here. And what will happen is the, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I had to think about it for a little bit, but I think I figured it out. So what will happen is this, which is directly connected to the lodge or the controller that turns this up will actually be connected to here like so, I think it was nor, all of them have to be off. Yeah, so when this is off and that is off, so basically when there is something that needs to be planted and when the car is not in the loop, that is when it will connect to this yellow controller as I've aptly labeled this controller right here. All right, we just need to connect this part all the way to the brown one right here. That way we know that it is off. Maybe something's not working right now, but that's, that's fine. Okay. I'm making things a little bit more confusing here. I don't know where I lost my spot, but I lost progress somewhere when I was thinking. So we're just going to pretend that I was talking about something and there was a good segue into this cut right here. So what I'm doing and trying to make sure is that when this yellow one is off and this brown one is off, that this can turn on and that means that this is going to be good to go. I th think that's how it works. Or I think I need it to turn off. I'm not entirely sure exactly. I think I need these bolts to be off for it to work. So now, essentially, if the car comes back onto the core, so let's actually throw it way back yonder. All right, way back yonder. Right here, it sees that it actually needs to, it needs to do its job and whatnot. It needs, it's like doing this thing. It knows that it's down and whatnot. So eventually it'll plant and then this one gets full. This one goes, I don't know why that one was spinning way faster than the other one. I might need to look into that, but anyway, so now it's back on track. And so now this brown brown logic gate should be on which turned off the what's in the called portion right yep so that's on brown logic gate is on and this has been turned on that makes it twist this way properly okay perfect next i get to do the fun part the fun part is actually knowing when to send the pulse to start the farms it's not connected yet but all the data that i need will be stored right here it's going to be really straightforward this is telling me what needs to happen right now. It's going to say what needs to happen. Eventually when I connect this up, I'm going to remove this logic bit. It's going to say it needs to farm the white section or white and cyan, I guess you can call it, will be this carrot. Dark gray or white, light gray and cyan will be this, uh, what's this called? I don't even know what this is. Broccoli or something like that. And then same thing with tomatoes and beetroots. It's going to be, it's pretty straightforward. And this is just going to be the one I'm actually going to actually move this. I don't need to. Well, yeah, I don't need to, but I'll keep it there anyways. This will be an indicator to tell me exactly where the, where the planting thing is. And I only need to know if it's at white, gray, or light gray and white. So we can just paint these respectively and attach those to the sensors that I put on those. I realize now that I put most of the logic that probably should be in the control center 
up here already and <laughs> that's okay all we need to do is just attach i guess the outputs to the control center so that way we know exactly what we need to do and actually this saves space because i would have to run back and forth to connect all this up and i i'm kind of lazy so i'm not going to do that wow that took a while but here is the semi-final setup what we have here is what needs to happen and what's going to happen here is what is currently happening can't see much going on right now because nothing actually needs to happen. There is no plant that needs to be planted. They are all full and that should be good. And I think this one tells me if there's an action that is needed. That's what this centralized uh, ore thing is for. This right here tells me where the, what's it called? Factory thing is in the first place. And then it also tells me which one is being activated slash deactivated. So if one of the planters happens to be going off, the, if it's the right side, the blue one will go. If the left side, the sign one will go. And what we need to do is just cross check these two together and produce and when, and basically say when, one single button, when to do the output. As an example, I just destroyed one of the tomatoes and now it is telling me that the white cyan part of this part of the factory needs to be set off. So all we need to do is make sure that this and these two actually line up. So now that we know that this white is on, this sign is on, this white is on, this sign is on, that means we are good to go. However, the thing, the factory is not completely down yet because it still thinks that this is still in place. So what we need to do there is put a final cross check on that and then send the output. So basically what it's going to do is just say, no, wait, we can't go. The car is still on the track. When it's broken, this will not be automated. We can fix that in the future. But for now, because we know the car will always go off the track after it's harvested and the harvesters will only want to go after it's harvested, we can basically assume that this will turn off eventually. And once that turns off, this will turn on. That will connect to this output. Or maybe we can make an ore or something like that. And this OR gate connects to this timer. And then this timer right here will then connect to the output or the tick gate, whatever you wanna call it. I don't know what to call it. We'll connect to this thing right here where the button is. And I gotta make sure this is an OR so that we can have it controlled by either the button or the control center over there just in case we wanna do something manually. I think that's actually how it's going to work. That's that's pretty simple. You know, I say it's simple, but a lot of you are probably thinking I'm being big brain right now. But this is kind of just basic logic if you know what you're talking about and been doing this for like four years like I have. OK, I have it all set up. I think I have something probably missing, but that's why we test things. So let's do a small scale test right now. It thinks that it needs to plant. And but however, it thinks that this car is still on the circuit. So all we need to do is bring the car off the circuit like so. Okay, let's pretend that it did its thing, right? And now let's bring the car off the circuit. And now that the car is officially off the circuit, it has now put those down. And it's actually started planting. Wow, hold on a second, that's not right. I didn't think it would work, <laughs> but it's actually working. What? What? No way. I mean, the water isn't connected because I forgot to connect the actual water parts, but it's doing its job just fine. Okay, well, I ran out of seeds, but it did its job. <laughs> what? Okay, well, it, it worked. I mean, yeah, it kind of, it, yeah, it kind of worked. Yeah, I'll say it worked, okay. So we're going to set this car off the path a little bit and make it go around. What we're gonna do now is see what will happen if we trigger both this one and this one. Hold on. There we go. And then leave it going. Okay. So it goes to plant. It's planting. The car is driving through. Okay. So now it stopped it. It's put itself back. The car, which would normally be stopped right here is gonna keep on moving. This red piston has now dropped, it was out, but now it's dropped back. And now this car is driving and it's gonna go back onto the loop. Perfect. Let's say that this car is 
going through here. It needs to plant the beetroots. It's going to say, hey, beetroots are needed. However, the car is now here. It stopped it from actually planting because the car is now in place. Okay, that's good to know. This might actually break, but we're going to actually go to the control panel and see what logic it thinks it needs to do. Okay, so right now, according to this, it's saying that it needs to plant beetroots on both the left and right side, and it is currently at that side, or it needs to at this side. It is currently at that side, and it also is ready to plant on both left and right. However, it doesn't have the clear because of car on track. So, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Oh, well, that's a problem, isn't it? Okay, I think I figured it out. I, it's basically a quick NAND and deal where I only want this gate to turn on if the brown one is off and the gray one is on. It's 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 just simple logic, basically. So we won't go over that too much because I want to end this episode soon. Right now, I know we are waiting. Ooh, what I could do is actually have another status bar somewhere, maybe a light on the bottom that tells me what's fully grown and what's waiting to be harvested and whatnot. Because these only tell me what needs to be planted and not what needs to be harvested. So I might do that at some point, but it's not, you know, the biggest deal for me right now. And so we just got to follow this red piping all the way down, all the way over to this gorgeous apparatus right here. You like it? I like it. It looks pretty cool. So it's basically just a pump and a vacuum right here in the water thing right there. For some reason, the pump is actually not on. All right, so now the pump is actually on. It's connected up to the lights properly. So let's keep those on the tomatoes. Let's just, I think for this test, for this episode, we're going to watch the physical side of it work. And then for the next, we can assume that the physical side works and watch the control center side, maybe. So these tomatoes should be just about harvesting or almost, yeah, almost fully grown. I think a couple more ticks. All right. We're starting to get some tomatoes grown. What's going to happen, the reality is, is the reason why I put just one sensor connected to a 60 second timer is because there will be around a 30 to 45 second difference in growth time, I think is kind of like the spread. And so I put a 60 second timer so that whenever the middle one grows, it'll give at least a minute for the rest of the tomatoes to grow in time. And then it will harvest them. I think that's fair. I did that in the last survival series, so. I think that's how we're going to keep it for now, too. While I wait, I might as well try to see and figure out exactly how I want to format this whole, I guess, the looks, the aesthetics of the factory, because right now I have this ceiling and it looks OK, but I kind of want to cover it up as well. OK. All right. Boom! it actually worked. Wow, I can't believe it actually did it. Looking at the control center, I actually realized that the car actually didn't trigger um, the command to turn the thing on in the first place. So actually, that actually helped me debug a little bit or else I would have had no idea where things went wrong. But the problem is that the OR gate wasn't triggered when it was supposed to be. So the OR gate gets triggered when the car drives over this sensor and the uh, this guy is fully it's been full 60 seconds since the sensor was triggered i just did it again and it seems like it should be working yeah okay for some reason this time it worked i'm not entirely sure why actually but it worked so we're not going to complain too much so now the car has driving over it's now left the loop that gives the go ahead for the factory to go and do its job everything has been twisted in place the crops are being planted well beetroots are being planted first this car is driving its way off as these beetroots are being planted. And I think we actually have plenty of time between when the car actually goes and it needs to come back through. So we really didn't need this waiting mechanism right here, but that's fine. That's just fail safe. You know, you can never be go wrong with too many fail safes. All right, now it's finished doing the beetroot. Now it's flipped over to the white side to do the tomatoes. All right, it's now resetting all the way through. And then we should wait six seconds. Okay, or no, it goes immediately. Okay. Oh, I forgot to check if that car actually sent off the tomatoes, but that's fine. I don't think it did. Three, four. All right, it's now sent. Actually, it's planted both crops just fine. Goodness gracious, it worked.
Oh my goodness, this is exciting. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I am so happy right now. Okay, so I don't think it actually spit out the tomatoes properly because I don't see any tomato packets. So I'll have to check the timing on those. But for now, that actually worked. Next episode, what we're gonna do is finalize the rest of this. I'm gonna put in the other side of the factory, get that all working. I might actually switch out these twisty bits, but I, you know, I won't make any promises. And then we will get to work on a new revolutionary, revolutionary package transport system to get this over to the trader in a really nice and easy manner. But until then, hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, night, or evening, and I will see you next time.